today we're going to be talking about dilutions. So we're going to talk about the two main types of dilutions, serial dilutions and linear dilutions. So serial dilutions is when you have a stock solution. So in this case we've got a one molar sodium hydroxide stock and we're going to be making a dilution from that stock. So say we take one mil from the stock into here and we add nine mils of water, that will be a one in 10 dilution. So there's one of the stock and 10 parts in total. So this is our water here. Okay, so that would be, if this is one molar, that would be a 0.1 molar solution. So serial dilution, we make a dilution from the stock and then from the first dilution, we make our second dilution. Okay, so again, if we were to do a one in 10, so nine mils of water and one mil of our stock, we'd have a one in 10 again. So that would be a one in 100 in total and it would be a 0.01 molar solution. So serial dilution, we're starting from our stock, we're making a dilution, and then we're using that made dilution to make our next dilution. Okay. So the way linear dilution is different is again, starting from a one molar sodium hydroxide stock, we're going to make two dilutions. So the first one, let's say, is a one in 10 again. So nine mils of water, and one mil of our stock, so one in 10, which is a 0.1 molar. And then if we need to make another one, we make it from the stock solution. So we're taking it from the stock, we're not taking it from the dilution that we've made. So let's say we're going to do a one in two dilution. So we've got a one mil of water and one mil of our stock. So that would be a one in two. So half of our one would be a 0.5 molar solution. Okay, so that's the two main types. The type that you would choose would depend on the type of dilution you want to make. So if you want to make a very small um, concentration, so 0 0.001 or something like that, and you only have large pipettes available to use, you would then use a serial dilution method. Um, but most of the time, you'll be using the linear dilution method. So what we're going to do now is talk about how to do the calculations for these types of dilutions. So to work out the calculations for dilutions, we use concentration equals your number of moles divided by your volume. So normally our concentration is in moles per litre. Okay, so our volume here would be in litres. So if we were to rearrange that, our number of moles equals our concentration times our volume. So using C1V1 equals C2V2, or CIVI equals CFVF, so whether you're using one and two or initial and final, you may have learnt one of them in high school. So I'll just use one and two. So basically what you can see we're saying here is the concentration and volume of your first solution, so i.e. the number of moles, the amount that you've transferred will be equal to the amount of moles that you have in your final solution. Okay, so how would we do a calculation? So if we have a stock solution, let's roll with the one molar sodium hydroxide. Okay, so our initial concentration is a one molar. Let's say we want to make our final concentration to be a 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide. We've then left with our two volumes. So V1 is how much of that initial stock solution do you need to transfer? Okay, so that's what we're trying to find out. And V2 is what are you going to make that final solution um, volume up to? So let's say we're going to make two mils in our final solution. So that's a nice amount for a test tube. Okay, so put, plot, putting the values in, you've got one times V1, which we're trying to work out, equals 0 0.5 times two mils. Okay, 
So you're probably thinking, oh no, she needs to convert that two mils into litres because remember we do moles per litre for our molarity. Okay, so whatever you put in is what you get out. So if you've got it in mils, we're going to get our answer out in mils. If you put in litres, you'll get your answer for V1 out in litres. So I'll show you how this works. So let's do this one. So rearranging, we've got 0.05 times 2 divided by 1. So 0.05 times 2 uh, divided by 1 would give you 1 mil. Okay, so our V1 is 1 mil. So if we take 1 mil of our one molar and we add one mil of our um, water that we're going to be making the solution up in. We would have two mils in total and it would be half the amount that we started with. Okay, so now if I convert this into litres, let's see how it changes. So V2 equals uh, 0.002 litres. So one times V1 equals 0 0.5 times 0 0.002. So V1 equals 0 0.5 times 0 0.002 divided by 1. Okay, so I'll do this on my calculator just because I want to make sure I get the right answer for you. Yeah, so we get 0 0.001 litres. So then converting that back, that will give us one mil. Okay. So whatever units you put in is the units you get out. So you don't need to convert to litres to do the calculations. Okay, and that's how you use C1V1 equals C2V2.